The mayor of Lac Megantic officially declared a state of emergency today, which will allow the town to react and rebuild faster in this crisis. The mayor also said the amount of work ahead in her community is gigantic. But as the cleanup begins, it's not what's on the surface that may be the biggest concern. Thomas Degg has that part of the story. The water may be choppy, but usually that doesn't prevent these boats from hitting the lake. Tanker trucks signal a much bigger problem. 100,000 liters of oil spilled nearby. Officials believe they've largely contained the spill and recovered much of the crude, but this lake feeds into the Shudziao River, and downstream the sheen on the water is causing plenty of concern. There's clearly oil coming downstream, and it appears as though there's an ongoing spill coming down here. Scott Smith came from Massachusetts to see the river for himself. He's been to major oil spills across North America in recent years and says this orangey-brown liquid found in the water looks like a chemical used to disperse oil, something he's seen elsewhere. Outside of Lac Megantic, Quebec, Canada, where there's oil flowing downstream, we are downstream towards the St. George's side, and you can see the oil and the sheen in the water from the train wreck, and, and it is flowing downstream towards the St. Lawrence River. And we've been able to get the outflux in the water and remove toxic oil and sheen and prevent it from going downstream. When we got here, it was just going by the uh, yellow containment booms and, and just going downstream. Scott Smith est venu de Boston pour donner un coup de main aux sinistrés. Sa manière à lui de contribuer, c'est cette technologie qu'il a développée après le désastre de BP dans le golfe du Mexique en 2010. I've been in the, every oil disaster since BP. When I read about this, we got in the car and drove, and my assistant Shane and I decided to drive up and volunteer our time. Une ceinture faite de matériel qui absorbe le pétrole. Depuis leur arrivée à Lac Mégantic hier soir, Scott Smith et son employé s'affairent à déployer leurs barrières d'une rive à l'autre de la rivière Chaudière. We came up and we wanted to quickly help the situation and volunteer and donate this product to try to get the oil out of the water. Une fois imbibé de pétrole, on essore le tout et on répète l'opération. D'ailleurs, les traces d'hydrocarbures sont bien visibles du haut de ce pont qui enjambe la rivière. The most important thing is to remove this oil before it goes downstream and gets in everyone's drinking water because that current's moving so rapidly. L'homme est ici à titre de bénévole. C'est la pire catastrophe écologique qu'il a vue depuis celle de BP. Plus de 100 000 litres de pétrole se sont déversés dans la rivière Chaudière. Quelques espèces mortes ont été retrouvées aux abords de la rivière Chaudière, mais pour l'instant, les autorités environnementales ne parlent pas de décès massifs. André Martin, TVA Nouvelle, à Québec. The Bakken Oil Field, North Dakota. The Missouri River in the background. One world, one waterway. The Missouri River connects to the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River connects to the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico connects to the rest of the world. We are all connected. We must all work together to preserve and protect the world's waterway. Train cars of Bakken crude oil, the same crude oil that exploded in Lac Megantic, Quebec, getting ready to leave the Bakken oil field in North Dakota. Fresh Bakken crude, North Dakota, fresh from the well. Out of the investigation, officials say it's unusual for crude oil to burn so fiercely. So they're trying to determine what exactly was in those 72 tankers. As Bonnie Allen reports tonight, some experts say investigators also need to go to the source of the shipment in North Dakota.
Fresh Bakken crude, North Dakota. This is the source, Bakken crude oil straight from the ground. The stuff that goes in the air and what caused the explosion has already escaped. So this being the source material, uh, we'll be able to tell a lot. Scott Smith is a chemist who has responded to every major oil spill in the past decade. His business helps clean up contaminated water. He took samples in Lac Megantique but wasn't satisfied. We found him in the Bakken oil field. This oil is lighter and it's volatile. And the smell is still dizzying. I'm still a little bit dizzy from being around. In my opinion, the investigation is incomplete until they actually go to the source. Bakken oil is extracted through an elaborate drilling process called fracking. Water, sand and chemicals are injected deep into the ground to blast through the rock, two or three kilometers down where there are more gases in the earth. As for those chemicals that go into extracting Bakken crude, there are hundreds of them, some toxic like benzene. But oil companies have fought to keep their cocktails a secret. Whatever goes in, Keith Stewart from Greenpeace has evidence of what comes out. A report filed by one oil company shows Bakken crude has 10 times as much benzene, a carcinogen and potentially explosive. And Stewart is also concerned about hydrogen sulfide, also found in Bakken crude. And so when you put oil in these black tanker cars and move them across the country, you're warming them up and you are shaking them like crazy. Um, and I don't think anyone ever thought about that. We reached out to the petroleum industry in North Dakota, but didn't get a response. Both Smith and Stewart say federal authorities need to investigate what's actually in Bakken crude, then determine what other regulations are necessary for the safe transportation by rail or pipeline. Bonnie Allen, CBC News, Regina. This is ground zero in Tioga, North Dakota of the 800,000 plus Bakken crude oil spill on the Tesora Energy Pipeline. The farmer's house and residence is in plain view and there is uh, quite a lot of water in the drainage areas around the property. As you can see there is water and this is a drainage area again less than two miles away from where the pipeline broke. Okay. And we're gonna fingerprint the water column. We're gonna put the optics in the water. Here we are, Tioga, North Dakota, October 13th, 2013. We have deployed the Opflex environmental indicator technology within two miles of the Tesora 800,000 gallon plus crude oil pipeline spill. And uh, I don't recommend this for anybody else because it is very slippery in icy conditions. And uh, you gotta be very careful when you're doing this. And we are now pulling the Opflex out so we can cut the tentacles. So, as we know, the um, a lot of the most dangerous chemicals and toxins can be clear, especially the chemicals related to fracking, to crude oil, and uh, other related contamination. So, what we're going to do is we are going to cut the tentacles off the open cell Opflex. And um, the good thing about the Opflex is there is an incredible amount of surface area. For every square foot, there's 300 square feet of surface area. And the Opflex truly mimics the human lung with its open celled surface area, like the alveoli of the human lung. And given all the volume and exposure to water, it's able to attract the contamination and repel the clear water. So this is a whole new way to fingerprint the water column and get baseline readings before and after spills to know what is in our water. And we put this in a glass jar and then we send it 
or deliver it right to a lab. So I'm going to cut various open celled Opflex tentacles and put them in the jar to be fingerprinted and see exactly what contamination has been attracted to and absorbed into the open celled surface area of the Opflex. And all these waterways are connected. And we must always remember there's one world and one waterway. 